Chapter 1 Gretchen sat in one corner of the school building with her friend Doris's three-year-old twins on either side of her. Rika, the schoolteacher and a close friend of Gretchen's, had decided to put on a dance, and though she was eight months pregnant and half the town wouldn't speak to her because of her condition, Gretchen was there with her head held high. Her fiancé had been lost at sea shortly before their wedding was to take place, and she missed him every day. His mother had led the other women in town to shun her after her condition became obvious to everyone, but she refused to let it bother her, at least outwardly. Inside she seethed with anger at both of their families for acting as if she'd done something horrible by getting herself in the position she was in. Never mind that it had taken two of them. How was she supposed to get through her overwhelming grief at losing the man she loved when the people who had known him best were no longer speaking to her? It would have been so much easier if people had been understanding of her situation instead of condemning her for it. She sat watching everyone else dance. Rika was obviously in love with her new husband, who had come to Salmon, Oregon, to marry Gretchen. Gretchen hadn't been able to go through with a wedding to a stranger, though. Not when she was still so very much in love with Reginald. Reginald would always be the man she loved. She didn't care how many years went by. She would remain true to him. Her mother told her she was stupid for holding on to her love for a dead man, but her friends seemed to understand. They worried what would happen once the baby was born, but they supported her anyway. Pre tugged at her hand. I want to dance with Bobby. Gretchen shook her head. Your brother is outside. You need to sit with me. Your papa said he'd dance with you after this last dance with your mama. She loved Doris's girls even though they were a handful. Pre sighed heavily. I want to dance. Pauline can dance with me. Gretchen looked at Pauline. Do you want to dance with your sister? Pauline nodded emphatically. All right. You two dance, but make sure you don't trip people and make sure you stay where I can see you. Pre jumped to her feet and took her twin's hand, the two of them wiggling wildly to the music. Gretchen smiled as she watched them. She wished she had a twin, someone who would be on her side through everything. Through thick and thin. She had that in Doris and Rika, but a twin would be even better. She looked out over the crowd, wishing she could dance with someone. But who would want to dance with her when they'd be up against her stomach? No, she'd be alone for a very long time, and she knew it. She turned her attention back to the girls, who were now holding hands and spinning in circles. The sheer joy on their faces lifted Gretchen's spirits. She felt rather than saw someone sit beside her, and she turned to see who was there, expecting it to be Rika or Doris, her only two friends who stood by her during her embarrassment. She couldn't wait until the baby was born, so people would stop treating her as if she was a leper. When she had turned fully to the person beside her, she looked at him in confusion for a moment. The beard was new, but underneath it, she'd kissed those lips hundreds if not thousands of times. Reggie? He nodded, his eyes going to her stomach. I'm so sorry. You're dead. Don't tell me I'm seeing ghosts now, too. She felt panic rise up within her. She needed him to be beside her, but did she need him so much that she was imagining that he was there with her? Dead? No. My mother was supposed to give you my note. He looked at her, his eyes full of sorrow. What note? I was told you were lost at sea. Gretchen's eyes filled with tears. If you weren't dead, why did you leave without telling me? Why didn't you come back? We were supposed to be married. From panic to anger took only a moment. The baby growing inside her had been messing with her emotions for months, but this was the first time she felt like they were changing so quickly. He sighed. I explained everything in the note. Let's go outside. How on earth did she not receive his note? He'd have been there for her every step of the way if he'd known about the baby. The guilt filling him was overwhelming, but he'd left for her. She shook her head. I can't. 
I have to watch my friend's girls. Could they come with us? His eyes pleaded with her to go with him. It was obviously very important to him, they were able to talk privately. I've got the girls. Introduce me to your friend, and then go walk. Doris was right beside Gretchen, looking down at her questioningly. Doris knew all of her hopes and dreams, and intense sorrows. Gretchen looked at Doris, knowing she had tears flowing down her cheeks and wishing she could stop them. People already looked down on her for being pregnant. Emotional would soon be added to her prior sins. Doris, this is Reginald. Apparently, he's not dead, but he has a lot of explaining to do. Reginald, this is my friend, Doris. She didn't add that Doris had made life bearable for the past six weeks. No, he didn't need to know just how miserable she'd been without him there. Reginald nodded to Doris, barely seeing her. He was too focused on his fiancé to care about anyone else. It's nice to meet you. With those words, he took Gretchen's hand and led her outside. Gretchen walked along quietly as he wove them through the couples who were dancing in the schoolyard. This dance was the only social event in a town that desperately needed distractions from the gossip that propelled them from day to day. When they were far enough away from the schoolhouse that no one would be able to overhear them, he said softly, My mother hounded me for a long time about not living before I married. She offered me a large sum of money if I would leave for just six months. I ignored her, but then she increased the offer, and I knew we'd have a better life if I took her up on it. One of her conditions was that I couldn't see you before I left. I wasn't allowed to take you with me. He sighed. I wrote you a note, and she promised she'd give it to you. Gretchen shook her head. I received no note. She truly wasn't surprised that his mother hadn't delivered it. The woman had always hated her for some reason, though she'd been nothing but polite. Well, I wrote one, explaining that I was going to put that money into a bank account, and then I was going to earn as much as I possibly could during that six months. I was going to come back, and we were going to start our lives together. He shook his head. Who told you I died at sea? Your mother. The words were spoken softly, more of an accusation than an answer to his question. You know she hates me. How could he have trusted his mother with that note? Of all people in town to give it to, she was the last one he should have. I knew she wanted me to experience more of life before our wedding, but she never hated you. It had always bothered him how melodramatic Gretchen was about his mother and her supposed dislike for her. He had never seen it, and he was sure it was all a product of her overactive imagination. Gretchen stopped walking and glared at him in the moonlight. She hated me. She organized all the women in town to shun me after it was obvious I was expecting. She wouldn't do that to the mother of her grandchild. Reginald couldn't believe his mother would do anything of the sort. Oh, trust me, she would. Gretchen started walking again, furious with him. Why didn't you write to me? So much could have been explained if he'd just taken a few minutes to send her a letter. It was one of the conditions. My mother said if you waited for me, then I would know you really loved me. He frowned. Why didn't you tell me you were expecting? I had just figured it out when you died. I was going to tell you the day I realized. I can't believe your mother orchestrated all of this. Gretchen had never truly felt hate in her life until that moment. I can't either, he said softly, wondering why the love of his life would say such horrible things about his mother. We'll sort it all out. I hope so. Gretchen wasn't sure they'd ever get past his devotion to his mother and his disbelief she was anything less than perfect. Was the pastor at the dance tonight? He asked her, his eyes narrowed a bit. I have no idea. Gretchen had tried not to notice who was there. She had focused on the girls and nothing else. Unmarried pregnant women didn't belong at dances. She'd gone to help her friend, not to socialize. Well, let's go to his house and see if he's there. Why? 
so we can get married right away, of course. My child is going to be born with my name. How could she not immediately realize he would want to marry her? Had she lost her mind? If your mother had insisted you stay gone for a year, then he wouldn't have been. She shook her head, suddenly so angry with the man beside her, she wanted to spit. My own mother won't speak to me unless she's yelling at me about how I've ruined her life and reputation. He'd abandoned her while she was pregnant with their child. We'll marry. I can help smooth everything over with your parents. How he'd smooth things over with his own mother, he didn't know. What had happened to his note? If nothing else, he believed that she had truly believed he was dead. Gretchen had never been an actress, and her tears had been very real. I don't know that I want to marry a man who would take off and leave his pregnant fiancé to believe he was dead. How could she ever trust him again? I thought you'd get my note. He shook his head. His sweet little Gretchen had shown him more fire in the last twenty minutes than she had in all their years together. Yes, the infamous note. I wonder what your mother will have to say about that. More lies I'm certain. If his mother had been there at that very moment, she could have cheerfully wrapped her hands around the woman's neck and squeezed. Never in her life had she felt that much hatred towards someone. I know you're angry with her, but I would appreciate it if you would not talk about my mother that way. She gave me life. No matter what had happened, she deserved his love and respect. Oh, I'm sure she is perfect in every way, and I'm the one lying to you. How else could things be? She shook her head. I'm going home. She had to get away from him so she could think. She looked at him, and she didn't know if she wanted to throw herself into his arms and thank God he was alive, or if she wanted to break a branch off one of the trees around them to beat him with. Home to the mother, who only yells at you. No, you're not. That's my baby you're carrying, and we're marrying. Tonight. How could she even think there was another option? Gretchen turned to him, standing toe to toe. I will not marry you tonight. I may never marry you. Do you have any idea how badly I want to kick you right now? I've spent six months mourning you day and night. I've cried constantly. Only the last few weeks have been bearable. I've been alone. Not just without you, but all of my friends stopped speaking to me. There was no reason for me to live except the baby I carried inside me. And now you're telling me that I need to marry you? And I can't disparage the woman who has made my life a living hell? No. I'm in charge of my own life and the life of this baby. She turned on her heel and walked away from him. She wished she could do it a bit more gracefully, but the babe was weighing heavy on her. Reginald stared after her in disbelief. Had she really just refused to marry him? In her condition? Had the woman lost her mind? He ran to catch up with her, catching her arm in his hand. We're getting married. My child will not be born a bastard. What difference does it make? I've already been painted by everyone in town as a woman of loose morals. Is that the kind of woman you want for your wife? Gretchen realized she was yelling like a shrew, and she didn't even care. His disappearance had wounded her in a way nothing else in the world could have. I don't care what other people think of you. I've loved you forever, Gretchen, and you're going to marry me. Gretchen took gulping breaths, trying to calm her anger. She hadn't even been this upset with his mother when she'd shunned her. She'd always had a sweet, even temper, but that was changing quickly. Why? If you can take off and live for six months without me, why would you feel the need to be married to me? You obviously have no love for me at all. He caught her arms in his hands, angrier than he'd ever been, but not willing to let her see it. If I'd known you were expecting, I'd have gotten on the first ship back to you. You have to know that. Guilt and anger warred within him. Why couldn't she see he'd left to make their future brighter? How could I know that? You left me with no communication at all. Couldn't you see your mother was just trying to keep us apart? 
Did you feel the need to have those six months without me? Did you need to escape before our marriage? I was trying to start our marriage with us in the best financial situation possible. Why can't you see that? Because I'm talking to a dead man. Gretchen yelled the words, and she was immediately ashamed. She'd been taught that a lady did not yell at her husband or anyone else. He took a deep breath, trying to force his anger away. He could see why she'd be upset with him, though he'd done all he could to let her know what was happening. Gretchen, I can see that we're both upset, and I think we both have reason to be. I'll call for you at ten tomorrow morning. I hope you'll be willing to spend the day with me, so we can decide a future for our child. Gretchen nodded. I will. She still couldn't believe he was back. Her mind was reeling. She needed time alone to process all that his return meant to her and her child. May I walk you home? Reginald didn't think he should be the one to back down, but obviously she did. He needed to have a discussion with his mother before they could move on. Yes, of course. She wasn't going to endanger herself or the child she carried because she was too stubborn to want to walk with him. That would be silly. Where have you been all this time? She wasn't sure why she asked because it didn't really matter. He'd not been with her, and that's what was important. I went to a logging town up in Kingston, Washington. I worked there every hour I could. I have the money my mother gave me saved up as well as the money I made working there. We have a nice little nest egg to start our marriage. He'd expected to find her waiting with open arms, ready to run to the pastor and marry him. Obviously, something had happened, and he was going to get to the root of it. Did you enjoy logging? He shrugged. I was good at it. I worked on cutting down the trees, and I learned to work in a sawmill. I enjoyed the sawmill more than I liked logging. My friend Doris's husband owns the sawmill here in town. She married Mr. Butler? He shook his head. I didn't think anyone would be willing to take on those boys of his. The Butler children had a reputation around town. Most people just called them the Butler brats. Gretchen grinned. She came here to be his mail-order bride. She loves him and the children. A mail-order bride? I guess that makes sense. If he was going to find a wife, it would have to be someone who had never met his children. Gretchen laughed softly. I can't wait for you to see his boys again. They're like different children. Rika says they're two of her best-behaved pupils now. If she hadn't watched the transformation herself, she didn't think she would believe it had happened. That's hard to believe. He stopped as they reached her house. I know you're angry with me, and I understand why. I'm going to get to the bottom of the misunderstanding between us. I want to marry you and raise our child together. She took a deep breath. She still loved him, but she couldn't imagine spending the rest of her life with his mother as her mother-in-law. We'll talk tomorrow. First, you talk to your mother. I will. He leaned down and brushed his lips across her cheek. I'll see you tomorrow. Dream of me. They were the words he'd always said when he left her at night. I've never dreamt of anyone else. With those words, she turned to go inside the house, shutting the door behind her. The house was dark, and her parents were already in bed. They had refused to go to the dance. Her mother had said she'd shamed them so much, they couldn't leave their ranch. As she slipped under her covers, she closed her eyes. Reginald was home. They had some problems to work through, but he wasn't dead. The man she loved had come back to her. Chapter 2 Reginald surprised his parents in the parlor when he got home. He sat down on the sofa and looked at his mother. I just saw Gretchen. It wasn't the way he'd expected to greet his mother after six months away, but he needed to discuss everything Gretchen had said to him. His mother wrinkled her nose. You went to her before you even came home? You were supposed to try to forget her while you were gone. 
Why didn't you tell me she was expecting in any of the letters she wrote me while I was gone? Don't you think I should have known about it? His own mother had kept the fact he'd be a father from him. What had she been thinking? She shrugged. I suppose it might have interested you, but the purpose of your absence was for you to live life a little before settling down, and I knew you'd have come right back home. Reginald sighed. I wish you'd told me. He felt as if he'd been betrayed by his mother, as well as Gretchen. He'd done what he was supposed to do, but they had both done things he didn't like. Well, I didn't think it was wise at the time. I'm sorry if that disappoints you. He rubbed the back of his neck, feeling his father's gaze on him. Hello, father. This was the conversation he really didn't want. His father had wanted him to work at the bank with him for years, and he wasn't going to do it. He liked doing physical labor, not sitting behind a desk. Hello. Are you ready to take your place in the bank with me? It had been his father's hope, since he was a small boy that Reginald would work in the bank with him. I'm not certain. I enjoyed working with my hands while I was gone. Reginald knew he didn't have to explain that statement because his father would know exactly where he'd been and what he'd been doing since he'd written letters every week. His father frowned at him. Who will take over the bank if not you? Reginald shrugged. I thought Margaret's husband wanted to take over. Margaret was his only sister, and she'd been married for three years. Her husband had always worked for the bank with their father, and he'd made no secret of his interest in running the bank after their father retired. He does, but he's not family. You are. I'll think about it. Reginald turned back to his mother. Did you give Gretchen the note I wrote her? He needed to hear what his mother had to say before he told her of Gretchen's accusations. I took it to her the very day after you left. She said that you were dead to her. His mother smoothed her skirt down, not looking at him. Reginald leaned back in his chair, not certain who to believe. His mother had been in his life from his first breath. Why would she lie? Gretchen, on the other hand, had every reason to lie. I see. Did she say differently? She's been moping about town as if you really did die. She won't speak to anyone. Gretchen had said no one spoke to her because his mother had gotten them to shun her. He had a hard time believing his own mother could be so cruel to the mother of her grandchild, though. Margaret hadn't had any children yet, so this was her first grandchild. Surely his mother would have nurtured her. He was actually surprised Gretchen hadn't been moved into this house. How odd. I'm going to spend some time with her tomorrow. I'm still determined to marry her, more than ever now that she's expecting. He shook his head. Are you excited to finally be a grandmother? His mother nodded. Of course I am. Now that you're back, Gretchen will be forced to let me see the baby. She told me she was going to keep me from it. He sighed. I'm going to bed. After I see Gretchen tomorrow, I'm going to clean out the cabin so I can live there. Hopefully my wife will be living there with me within the week. He got to his feet. Good night. Good night, son. I'm glad to have you home again, his mother said, smiling at him. He nodded and headed for the stairs. How was he supposed to know who to believe in this whole crazy situation? Asterisk. Gretchen sat through breakfast with her parents the following morning, listening to her mother berate her as usual. How are you ever going to find a husband when you have another man's child? You need to find a couple who want to raise that baby so you can find a man to take care of you. Gretchen usually sat quietly as her mother lectured her on how she'd ruined all of their lives. Reginald is back in town and not dead. He wants to marry me. Her mother's eyes narrowed on her. If he's not dead, why did he abandon you? Gretchen realized then she couldn't win. She shouldn't have said anything about him being back. Her mother would think she was worthless no matter what. He'll be here at ten. She had nothing else to say. 
I certainly hope you're bright enough that you drag him off to the preacher today. You need to give that baby a name. Gretchen sighed. Now she needed to keep the baby, but it needed a name. Of course. She had no choice about anything in life, because she was nineteen, expecting, and unmarried. She ate another bite of her eggs, not responding. It wasn't like anyone would listen to anything she said anyway. After breakfast, she did the dishes, and then she went to her room. Looking into a mirror, she realized she'd done little with her appearance since she'd been told of Reginald's demise. She put her hair up into an intricate updo. She hadn't done more than pin it up into a bun for months. She put on her prettiest dress, thankful she'd let it out for church, and she waited. If he was there at ten like he'd said, maybe the two of them could start building up their trust for one another again. If not, she was sure they wouldn't have a future. How she would ever be able to trust him enough to be his wife, she didn't know. At five minutes before ten, she walked down the stairs and waited in the parlor for him. Her father was out working on their ranch as usual, but her mother was dusting. I can't believe that as soon as he comes back, you rush to his side. Have you no pride, girl? Gretchen said nothing. Just hours before, her mother had said she'd be an idiot if she didn't drag him to the preacher. She was done listening. She'd made mistakes, but she wasn't going to pay for them every hour of every day. Maybe she should marry Reginald just to get away from her mother's constant complaining. She jumped at the knock on the door, rushing over to open it. Reginald. Come in. She led him into the parlor to see her scowling mother. Mother, you remember Reginald. She felt like she had to be nice about everything, but she wanted to lie on the floor and throw a fit worthy of any toddler. Her mother nodded. Marry her. That's exactly what I want to do, Mrs. Jensen. Reginald smiled and nodded at Gretchen's mother. I'll have her back before too long. At least I know you can't get her into any more trouble than she's already in. Reginald frowned at that, offering his arm to Gretchen. They walked toward the front door and outside. As soon as the door was closed behind them, he looked at her. Has she been this pleasant the whole time I've been gone? Gretchen nodded. If not for my friends, I would have gone insane. I'm sorry. He didn't mention what his mother had said to him, because he didn't want to upset her. He walked toward the small cabin he'd purchased for them months before. I'm going to move into the cabin as soon as I can. I think tonight if possible. It needs a good cleaning, and I want to make sure the roof doesn't leak. All right. Gretchen wasn't even sure what to say to that. Was he telling her about the cabin because he wanted her to marry him and live there with him? Or was he just talking? I'd like to go into town and marry today. She shook her head. She'd given the matter a lot of thought, and though she was thrilled he was back, she needed to know he'd stand by her and not leave her again. Not yet. He sighed. What do I need to do to prove myself to you? She shrugged. I don't know. I need to be able to trust that you won't leave me and not come back for six months at a time. As much as she needed to get away from her parents' home, she needed to be able to trust him at least a little bit first. How could that possibly happen? I told you why I left. Why was she being so unreasonable? I know you did. It still makes no sense to me. Gretchen refused to back down. It wasn't just her life at stake, but that of her child's as well. I don't want my baby to be a bastard. He hated the word, and he always had. He couldn't bear it if the word was apt to describe his child. She shrugged. I don't want that either. Baby's not due for three more weeks. Hopefully by then, we'll have things worked out. I don't want to wait that long. He shook his head. Gretchen, I wanted to marry you before I left. We'd be married now if I hadn't accepted my mother's stupid deal, and I do realize now that it was very stupid. I should have stayed here with you where I belonged. He'd known for years that they belonged together. 
Why had he left her? The idea of having an easier life had been appealing, but he'd thrown away six months they could have spent together. I know we wanted to marry. It's just, well, you seem different. You didn't have a beard before. I had seen you every day for years, and suddenly no contact for six months. We need time to get to know one another again. She was stalling. The truth of the matter was she needed to be able to trust him. She'd know when it was time, at least, she hoped she would. He sighed. I guess you're right. He stopped in front of the cabin. I haven't been in there since I got back. Do you want to come in with me, or wait until I've made certain it's suitable for humans? She smiled at that. I can handle whatever's there. I think you'll be surprised by how much stronger I am than when you left. Maybe she wasn't stronger physically, though she believed she was, but she was so much stronger emotionally. She had dealt with no one speaking to her for months, before Doris arrived in town. No one could go through that if they weren't strong. She was strong enough to marry him or not marry him. She could handle it alone. Maybe his absence had been a good thing. She now knew her own strength. I do know you're more beautiful than when I left. And to him she was. Her face seemed to glow. He wasn't sure if it was her condition or that he'd missed her so much for so long. It had been all he could do not to pull her into his arms, but he hadn't felt that he had the right to do that. Not yet anyway. He stepped into the cabin, and it was as he'd expected. There was dust on every surface, but other than that, it was fine. Together, they worked until lunchtime, cleaning every surface of the cabin. She looked around her with a smile. I thought I'd be living here by now, fixing your breakfast every morning. That's what I want. And I want to see if I can get a job at the sawmill. How close are you to Harvey Butler? He asked, as they locked up the cabin and walked toward town. I'm closer to his wife than I am to him, but I've spent almost every evening there for the past couple of months. Doris has become like a sister to me. She stood up to your mother and refused to shun me. He frowned at that, not wanting to believe her. I can't wait to get to know her then. His mother couldn't possibly have shunned the mother of her grandchild. He knew she'd sometimes had issues with other women, but to do that, she would have to be truly awful, and he'd never seen that from his mother. As they walked, he took her hand in his, and she allowed it. After she was here about a month, Doris decided I needed a husband, so she sent a letter to her sister who is a matchmaker in Massachusetts. Her brother came out to marry me, but I couldn't go through with it. I know I need a husband so I'm not alone, and he was willing, but it just didn't feel right. So my friend Rika, the schoolteacher, married him. You almost married someone else? He was surprised by how much her words hurt him. I didn't even meet him before I called it off. He got to town, and I was supposed to be at the train station to meet him, but I just couldn't do it. Instead, I left a note on Doris's table that I wasn't ready for marriage, because I was still too in love with you. She knew he'd eventually find out about her almost marriage to Daryl, so she wanted to be the one to tell him and not someone else. But you initially agreed? How could she have even thought of marrying someone else if she really loved him like she said she did? Sort of. I guess I did. Doris talked me into it. I'm glad I didn't go through with it, though. Gretchen understood why he was hurt. She would have been if the situation was reversed. Maybe they both had some things to make up for with each other. She hadn't been quite as true as she should have been. He frowned at her. So am I. My baby would have a different name if you did. Reggie. I thought you were dead. I was an unmarried, pregnant woman who was shunned in her own town, whose mother only spoke to her to lecture her. What was I supposed to do? Surely he could understand the situation she'd been in. Especially with the lies his mother had told her. I don't know. Wait for me? You were dead. That's what you're not seeming to understand. 
I thought you were never coming back. I knew you would if you could, but I was told you were dead. Well, I still wish you'd waited. For you to be resurrected? Gretchen shook her head. I did end up waiting, to the chagrin of everyone around me. I really should have married him, but I couldn't imagine kissing any man, but you. Did you ever kiss him? Only one man's lips have ever touched mine, and he's walking beside me. She had never even looked at another man. She'd been in love with Reginald for as long as she could remember. So why aren't we getting married today? She bit her lip. She should marry him. If only to torment his mother. After a moment, she nodded. I'll marry you. I want my friends there, though. Today, he pressed. He knew he was being unfair and using her guilt against her, but if that's what it took to get her to marry him, then that's what he'd do. Exactly that. His child needed a father. She nodded. I'm betting we'll find Doris and Rika together. I'll tell them, and we'll all go to the preacher together. I want to talk to Mr. Butler as well. I'm ready to work for him. I'm experienced. Do you know if he has enough work for two men? He does. But Daryl, Doris's brother, and Rika's husband, is already working for him. You'd be a third man. I know they're both still very busy, though. She liked the idea of him working for Harve. It would be a way to tie her even closer to her sisters of the heart. Well, I'll talk to him then. Today if possible. I'd love to be able to start working for him on Monday. The sooner he had paying work, the better off they'd be. He wouldn't go back to fishing. He'd never truly enjoyed it like he did working at the sawmill anyway. What about your father? She knew his father had been pushing for him to work at the bank with him for years. Reginald had never really liked the idea, but he'd always believed he'd do what his father wanted. My father will just have to try to get my son to work for him some day. I'm not willing to be a banker. I would go insane. She nodded. I always thought so. He stopped walking and turned to her. I'm going to make you happy, Gretchen. I promise. She smiled. I hope we make each other happy. He started walking again, wishing he could completely trust. Chapter 3 When Doris came to the door a few minutes later, Gretchen explained what she and Reginald were there for. Is Rika here? I want her to be at my wedding. She couldn't marry without both of her friends there. She had no sisters other than them, and her family had made it clear they didn't care. These two women meant so much to her. Of course she's here. We were wondering where you were. Doris opened the door wide so they could come in. Are we heading right over for the wedding? Doris knew Gretchen well enough to know that if Reginald was back, there would be a wedding. Yes, we are, Reginald responded. And I want to talk to your husband today if possible. I have some experience working in a sawmill, and I'm wondering if he could use some help. Rika and Doris exchanged a look. They need a lot of help, Doris said. If you're experienced already, Harv is going to be thrilled, and maybe I'll get to have a husband. Rika nodded. I wouldn't mind a little more time with my husband either. Maybe you could take me over after the wedding then, Reginald suggested. I could use the work. He didn't mention the money he had saved. He wanted that for a rainy day. All right then, Doris said, wiping her hands on her apron before she removed it. Let's go have a wedding. She called the children to her, taking the hands of each of the twins. We're going to have another wedding. Pre looked at her with a frown. Wedding? Like when Uncle Daryl married Aunt Rika. Pre nodded, understanding then. Will Gretchen be Aunt Gretchen now? Doris laughed. Yes, she will. Gretchen grinned at her friend, understanding, completely. She was already like an aunt to the girls, so the title would just make it that much more so. Sounds good to me. A few minutes later, 
they were all walking toward the pastor's house for the second time in two weeks. We seem to be making a habit of this, Rika said with a grin. I didn't go last time, Gretchen reminded her friends. She was a bit uncertain about marrying Reginald so quickly, but he was the baby's father. She hated being ostracized as an unwed mother. She prayed it would all work out for the best. When they got to the pastor's house, Mrs. Savoy turned her nose up. You'll need to make sure these hooligans don't destroy anything, she said by way of greeting. I can see you're all here for another wedding. I'll get the pastor. She hurried away, certain her entire house would be demolished by the boys. Ten minutes later, they were married. You may kiss your bride, Pastor Savoy said, a huge smile on his face. It was obvious this was a wedding he was pleased with because the baby would have a father. Reginald caught Gretchen by her shoulders and pulled her to him, kissing her softly. It had been so long since he'd kissed her, or touched her, that it felt like forever. But it was done. They were married. Now they just had to get their things moved into the small cabin, and they could begin their lives together. Thank you, Pastor. Reginald shook the pastor's hand, passing him some money with the handshake. The pastor nodded. It's good to see you home, son. I'm glad you didn't die like the rumors said. Rumors? Yes. The whole town thought you were dead and buried. We're all happy to see you back here, but none of us as much as Gretchen, I'd bet. The pastor smiled at Gretchen. Now maybe the ladies in town will start speaking to you again. Gretchen shrugged. I know who my real friends are now. When Doris had stood up to Reginald's mother, the other women in town had spoken to Doris, who had been shunned for talking to Gretchen, but none of them had gone so far as to speak to Gretchen. Reginald frowned. His mother had said it was Gretchen who had moped around and not talked to others. If she'd lied about that, was there a chance she'd lied about the note as well? He didn't see how it was possible, but there was that chance. Reginald's mind was spinning as they walked back toward the mill and the house behind it. If Gretchen had told the truth about being shunned, what else was she telling the truth about? What if his mother really had told her, and everyone else, he was dead? It was hard to believe she'd do such a thing, but she had never been fond of Gretchen. Doris made a big lunch for everyone and had Gretchen watch it while she hurried away. Ten minutes later, she was back with Harvey Butler and another man Reginald had never seen before. Harve, this is Reginald, Gretchen's husband. Reginald, this is Harve and my brother, Daryl. Daryl is married to Rika. Reginald shook both men's hands. It's nice to meet you both. He wasn't sure if he should resent Daryl or not. Knowing the other man had come to town to marry Gretchen didn't sit well with him. Harve sat down at the table and motioned for Reginald to sit as well. Doris tells me you have experience working in a sawmill, and you want to work for me. Reginald took the seat Harve indicated and nodded. Yes, I do have experience. I worked in a lumber camp and at a sawmill during the six months I was gone. I really enjoyed working for the sawmill. Harve smiled. I am most definitely in need of a third man for my business. My wife would like to see me during daylight hours occasionally. He winked at Doris, who grinned. That sounds good to me. When can I start? Monday soon enough? Harv seemed genuinely excited to have another man on his payroll. We're behind, but with three of us, I think we could get caught up within a few weeks. I would love to work a five-day work week instead of six. That would be nice, Reginald said with a smile. I'll do six until we don't need to any longer. Dora started to put food on the table, knowing her husband would want to get back to work quickly. Everyone eat. Monday you'll have more help, so you can take the time it will take you to eat. Harve shrugged. I never pass up a meal cooked by my wife. He reached back and caught Doris's hand, bringing it to his lips. As he watched, Reginald hoped he and Gretchen could get back to the kind of relationship the other couple had. 
He thought they had an easy camaraderie, but it was all different now that he was back. He wanted to kick himself for taking his mother's deal and leaving her alone and pregnant. Once lunch was over, he and Gretchen left, walking to his parents' house. He needed to use his father's wagon to move all of their things into the cabin. As soon as he walked in the door with Gretchen beside him, he called for his mother. She had a scowl on her face when she saw Gretchen. Why did you bring her? I told you how she's treated me. Reginald frowned. I married her this afternoon. She's my wife. I came to borrow father's wagon so we can move our things into the cabin. Why was his mother being so cold to his bride? His mother frowned. Go and get it. You know he won't mind. As soon as Reginald left her there with her new mother-in-law, Gretchen smiled. She wanted to mend fences, though she knew the other woman was a snake. She would have to be the one to make an effort to get along because she knew her mother-in-law never would. I'd love to have you over as soon as the cabin is ready. Maybe next Sunday after church? I'll never accept you as a daughter-in-law. You're not good enough for Reginald, and you never will be. Taking a step closer to her, his mother said in a low voice, Know that every time you see me in town, I will be thinking about you not being good enough. Know that I will talk to every woman in town who will listen and convince them that baby is not my grandchild. Gretchen nodded. Thank you for making it clear where I stand. Now I don't have to make an effort to be kind. She turned and walked out the door, going to the stable and watching Reginald hitch up the team. We should have my parents over for supper soon. I invited your mother, and she declined. Gretchen wasn't willing to say anything else because she didn't want to be accused of lying. She knew he'd believe his mother over her because he thought his mother could do no wrong. It was infuriating, but she loved him and was carrying his child. There was nothing she could do about it but accept the situation for what it was. When they got to her house, she told her mother they'd married, and she led Reginald up the stairs to her room. She pointed to her hope chest, where she'd been saving dishes and linens, and even quilts, since she was a child. She was excited to spread her things around the cabin. Maybe neither of their parents approved of the marriage, but she would be happy. If only to infuriate them. When they got to the cabin, she spread things around, putting her clothes away and carefully setting her dishes on shelves above the countertops in the kitchen. Reginald returned the wagon while she worked. Once he'd unhitched the team, he went into the house. Thanks for the loan of the wagon, father. I have everything back like it was. I married Gretchen today, and I'm going to be working for Harp Butler at the sawmill in town. He waited for his father's anger, knowing he wouldn't be happy with his decision to not work at the bank. But I've saved the spot of vice president at the bank for you. Give it to Jason. He wants it. Reginald had always thought his brother-in-law would do a much better job as a banker than he would anyway. But you're my son. Not Jason. Jason is your son-in-law. He'd be happy to take the position. I'd be utterly miserable. Reginald looked at his mother. Gretchen said she asked you for supper, and you turned her down. She told me she'd never let me see you or the baby. She never asked me to supper. His mother looked shocked. He sighed, still not knowing who he should believe. The whole situation was difficult enough without the lies flying around. Well, if she asks, please agree. I know it's hard for her with everything that's gone on between the two of you. When he got back to the cabin, Gretchen had already hung curtains, and there was a tablecloth with tiny embroidered flowers on the table. The house looks good. Gretchen smiled, and her face was full of joy. I don't ever have to live with my mother again. You have no idea what a relief that is. You and your mother were close before the pregnancy, weren't you? Yes, we were, but she can't seem to get past the shame I brought on the family. She shook her head. I wish I knew what to do to make things better. It sounds like there are a lot of bridges that need to be mended. 
he sat down at the table. Who's seeing you for your pregnancy? Widow Larkin. She's the midwife in town. She said to send for her when my pains start, but she's thinking I have at least another month to go before that happens. Gretchen was ready for the difficulties of pregnancy to be over, but she wasn't sure she was ready to have a child yet. They were so newly married, and she wanted to have a normal new marriage, not one filled with cries in the middle of the night. Of course, if she'd waited to have relations with Reginald until they were married like she should have, a normal marriage would have happened naturally. What will you do if your pains start while I'm at work? I'll probably keep spending at least partial days with Doris and Rika. If something happens, one of them will be there. He frowned at that. What do you do there all day? He couldn't imagine they would still have things to talk about with all the time they seemed to spend together. She shrugged. Same thing I'd have done at home. I sew. Mostly clothes for the baby, but not always. I've helped Doris make new clothes for all of her children and Harv. Their family was sorely neglected by this town before Doris came here. She'd only ever lived in Salmon, but she could see the town had a great many liabilities, most of them with the women of town. They didn't help one another or build one another up like she believed they should. The boys seemed like totally different children. She must be very good with them. He'd been surprised even though she'd told him the boys were different. It was good to see the changes they'd made. Oh, she really is. Doris came from a family of wild children herself. Her brothers and sisters were referred to as the Demon Horde. She hates that her new children have a similar derogatory nickname, and she's done what she can to stop the children being called by it. She sounds like a good person. Maybe she would be someone who could help make Salmon a better place to live. She's one of the best cooks I've ever met. She's been teaching me a bit about cooking. My mother taught me, but she's a very by-the-book cook. She does nothing without a recipe, telling her exactly how long to cook everything and what ingredients to add. Doris just throws in a little of this, and a little of that, and suddenly she has a wonderful meal. I hope to be more like her someday. And Rika is friends with both of you? That seems like an odd friendship to me. The mother of the two most disobedient children in town being close friends with the schoolteacher. How did that come about? He was baffled by her circle of friends, but very thankful that she had them. Gretchen grinned. They met when Rika sent home a letter asking to meet with Doris. She wanted to make a plan to ensure better behavior from the boys. There was no need for a plan, but we all became friends that afternoon. The three of us were town outcasts, and we became best friends instead of letting the others act as if we weren't good enough. I like that. So even though you had to contend with both of our mothers, you had friends on your side. I'm glad. I hate that you were alone so much after I left. He reached out and took her hand in his. I promise you right now that I'll never leave you again. I shouldn't have left to start with. I should have simply married you and earned the money we needed once we were married. Will you forgive me? Gretchen stared at him for a moment, surprised by the apology. She'd had a terrible few months during his time away, but having him back was wiping away the memory of the bad times. Of course I forgive you. What would I do without you? Forgiveness didn't mean she could trust him again, though. That would take some time. He brought the hand he was holding to his lips. Thank you. We're going to start over right now, and I promise you that our marriage will be a good one. It doesn't matter who is working against us. We have a baby on the way, and we're going to be happy. She smiled slightly. We're going to live happily ever after, just like they say in the fairy books. Yes, I promise you. We will live happily ever after. Chapter 4 Once the cabin was organized, Gretchen realized they didn't yet have food. After a glance at the clock, she jumped to her feet. We need to go to the mercantile if you want to eat before Monday. Reginald took her hand, 
and they hurried from their small home, walking toward town. Thankful the walk was short, they got to the small store only fifteen minutes before closing. He was surprised at the look he received from the proprietor's wife, Mrs. Gottweiler. Why is she looking at me so strangely? Everyone in town thought you were dead, Gretchen whispered back. I'm not even sure how your mother received mail from you without it getting around town. He frowned at that. I am. Her friend, Melba Fry, is the postmistress. They must have had an understanding. He shook his head, having a hard time dealing with the obvious lies his mother had told and the vision he'd always had of her. He'd been the favorite child because he was the only male. He could recall some fights his mother had with his sister, but she'd been enough older than him that they never really affected him much. Mrs. Gottweiler, Reginald is back from the dead. Isn't it wonderful? We married this afternoon. Gretchen called out to the older woman. She knew that it would make it so people would speak to her again if she was married. Mrs. Gottweiler came out from behind the counter, staring at Reginald with a white face. So Mrs. Linden is now your mother-in-law, she finally asked Gretchen. She is. It's a scary prospect, isn't it? Gretchen smiled at the woman, one of their first supporters in the uprising against his mother. It was sad that the women of town had to work against her, but there'd been no other way. Very. I, well, I'm just thrilled to be able to speak to you. We all felt we could go against her and speak to Doris, but you, she hates you. I know. I've never understood why, because I've never been anything but courteous and polite. Gretchen shook her head. It truly baffles me. I can tell you why. She picked out the daughter-in-law she wanted almost twenty years ago. She tried to push Liz at Reginald over and over, but it never worked, and he chose you. So you get the cold shoulder rude treatment. Mrs. Gottweiler hugged Gretchen. It will get better with time. Now, what are you looking for? We have a few minutes before close, and I'd love to help you. Reginald listened to the entire discussion, his mind spinning. Did everyone know his mother was the type of woman who would hurt others? What did his father think of her? He remembered Margaret telling him to be careful after he'd become engaged to Gretchen, but he hadn't understood. Now he thought maybe he did. He carried their heavier basket home with the groceries in it, and she carried a light one. What would you think of getting a cow for fresh milk every morning? And maybe a few chickens for eggs? I was shocked at what we paid for a dozen eggs. She shook her head. She'd rather be self-sufficient. The last few months had taught her to rely on no one. He watched her, surprised she didn't mention what had been said about his mother in the store. Of course he'd made it plain to her that he didn't believe her the previous evening. He'd wait and gather more information and bring up the topic again when he was ready. I would be open to both. Do you know how to milk a cow? She laughed. I was raised on a ranch. I can milk them and help them give birth. Well, you'll have to teach me then because I have no idea. How often do they need to be milked? She looked at him for a moment, trying to determine if he was joking. Twice a day. I could probably handle that. He opened their door and put the groceries onto the table. Do you need help putting things away? She shook her head. No. It's a little hard for me to go into the cellar at the moment, but I can handle it. I want to know where I put everything anyway. It was exciting to choose places for her things in her new house. She had never realized how much she'd enjoy something like that. He frowned at her. Let me put the things that go in the cellar away. I don't want to risk you falling and hurting yourself or the baby. She stopped where she was and looked at him. How do you feel about the baby? He'd immediately taken responsibility for her and the child, but he hadn't mentioned a feeling for it. Was it only an obligation to him? Reginald looked at her for a moment. I guess I never really thought about how I felt about it. I looked at you, knew you were carrying my baby, 
and immediately started to try to find ways to take care of you. I've always wanted children. I think I probably would have preferred to be married for at least 10 months before the baby was born, but it doesn't matter a lot to me. I'm just happy to know we're going to be parents. Gretchen smiled. I'm glad. I worried you wouldn't want her, or him. When? When I'd lie awake at night and dream you were still alive and that there was some horrible mistake that made your mother think you were dead, but you really weren't. He walked to her and wrapped his arms around her, holding her for the first time in months. I can't even begin to describe how much I missed you every day. Then I'd think about everything we could do with the money she was giving me to stay away, and I thought it was worth it. If I'd had any idea you were told I was dead, I'd have come straight back here. I know you would have. Gretchen rested her head on his shoulder. I wish you'd talk to me about being asked to go instead of just leaving. It would have made the past six months so much easier for me. She thought she could have even handled being pregnant and alone if she'd known he would return eventually. I'm so sorry I didn't. I don't know why I trusted my mother to pass that note on. I should have known better. She's never been overly fond of you. She laughed at that. Overly fond? You mean she's always hated me for breathing the same air she did? He frowned, still not wanting to admit that his mother could possibly hate his wife. I'm sorry she's been so ugly to you. Gretchen shrugged. She's been no worse than my own mother. An unexpected pregnancy seems to bring out the worst in people. You'd think they'd be thrilled to have a grandchild on the way. But neither of them are? You're right, it's very strange. I wish I had answers. Maybe now that we're married, things will get easier for you. He hoped so. He almost wished he didn't have to work so he could protect her from people like that, but he knew her friends did a good job of it. She'd be fine. As he carried the canned goods down into the cellar, he couldn't help but think about how strong she'd had to be to face everyone in town alone. She'd been pregnant in a town where people were very rude to people they didn't approve of. He shook his head, wondering if she'd told his mother before the rest of the town. He'd have to ask her about that. Once the groceries were put away, she made a simple supper for the two of them. Sorry it's nothing special, but we got started late, she said softly. We both had a very busy day. I have no problem with you making something simple. He watched her as she cooked, realizing he'd never eaten anything she'd made before. Did you tell my mother you were expecting before everyone knew? Yes, I went to see her, she said softly. What happened? He was almost afraid to ask, but he needed to know exactly what he was dealing with. She told me that the baby couldn't have been yours. She said she would be certain the whole town knew that I was a trollop and seeing other men while we were engaged. Things of that sort. She shrugged, trying to act as if she didn't care but the whole experience had been hard on her. What did you say? he asked. I told her I didn't expect her to recognize the baby as her grandchild, and I was sorry to have disturbed her. There was no point fighting with her. She turned and put a plate full of pancakes onto the table, followed by another plate full of bacon. I hope you're hungry, because I made a lot. He didn't push her to find out more about her conversation with his mother. Just 24 hours before, he would have accused her of lying, but now he was pretty sure she'd told the truth. Mrs. Gottweiler had truly believed he was dead. There was no doubt in his mind. Famished. As they ate, she frowned. There's only one bed. He raised an eyebrow at her. It's not like we've never been intimate. Did she not want to sleep with him? But it was only that one time, and I'm huge. I don't want you to see me this way. He groaned. To tell you the truth, I don't care what you look like. I just want to sleep with you and hold you. You can hold me, but I want to wait till after the baby comes for anything else. His body hated the idea, but his mind understood. She'd been through so much more than just a pregnancy while he'd been gone. 
All right. Her eyes flew to his in surprise. You mean it? I do. You have the right to want to get to know me better again. The man you knew would never have left for six months with no word. Does that mean there was no note? That means I'm certain my mother didn't deliver a note. So you have every right in the world to mistrust me. I will spend the rest of my life helping you to see that I'm trustworthy. I promise you this. Gretchen smiled. Thank you. For what? For believing me and not insisting that she would have delivered the note. She shrugged. It's nice to not have you argue with me about it. Well, if you want to argue, I'm sure I can come up with something better than that. She laughed. You know, I don't think we ever argued before yesterday. We always agreed and got along. Maybe arguing is good for us. I don't think so, he winked at her, so happy to be sitting across a table from her. He didn't care what he was eating or where he was as long as she was at his side. Asterisk. Church was odd on Sunday morning. Gretchen had been going to church and not spoken to for so long, she'd almost forgotten people did speak to one another before and after the service. When the pastor announced they'd married the previous day, she felt every eye in the church on her. Reginald had simply put his arm around her and acted as if him coming back from the dead to marry his pregnant fiancée were something that happened every day. At the back of the church after the service, the other women swarmed around her, and her eyes searched for Rika and Doris. Do you need anything for the baby? One woman who had turned her back on her in the street just days before asked. Gretchen shook her head. No, I really don't. I've done a lot of sewing for the baby, and Reginald is making a cradle. I can't think of anything else we need. Not that she would accept anything from the woman anyway. How could she treat her like she was nothing one day and like she was a friend the next? She'd still made the mistake of sleeping with a man she wasn't married to. Was the sin no longer important because she was married? Well, if you need anything, you just call me. I'll arrange for the women to bring food to your house after the baby is born. I'm sure you'll need help like we all do. Gretchen wasn't certain what spurred her to ask her next question, but for some reason, she was unable to stop herself. If Reginald hadn't come back from the dead and married me, would you still be making that offer? The woman, Mary Stockwell, frowned at her. Well, of course not. I'd have done what your mother-in-law told me to do and shunned you. Why would I have gone against her? Maybe because it would have shown you could think for yourself? Or because it was the right thing to do? Gretchen shrugged. Don't worry, though. This experience has taught me a great deal. Primarily who my friends are. She caught Doris's eye and smiled at her friend. Doris came to her side, linking her arm with hers. You and Reginald should come over for lunch after church. We'd love to have you. Gretchen smiled. I'll ask him, but I think we'll do that. Thank you for the invitation. She wanted Reginald to get to know the people who had become so important to her. I think Rika and Daryl will go back to their house and not join us today. They're too busy being newlyweds to care about the rest of us. Gretchen laughed. Well, we're being newlyweds, too, but we have some ground to cover. She was so happy to be able to turn her back on the women who had treated her so poorly. Maybe it made her a bad person, but she was tired of people being so hypocritical. Everything she had done before had still been done. Simply because she now bore his last name didn't change her past. As they left the church, Gretchen told him about their invitation, and Reginald nodded. I'd like to get to know them better. It sounds like she was a true friend to you when you really needed one. And it wouldn't hurt him to get to know his boss better before he started work. She and Rika both were. We were all outcasts, so we decided that we would be outcasts together. It worked much better for us. Doris's house was right there in town behind the sawmill, so it was an easy place to stop on their way home. Gretchen was very comfortable in her friend's home, 
having spent time there most days for months. After she sat down at the table, she picked up a shirt that needed fixing from Doris's never-ending pile of mending and went to work on it. Reginald looked at her for a moment, before following Harf from the kitchen. I'm so glad Doris was there for Gretchen when I couldn't be. It's very saddening for me to see how she was treated by most of the women of this town while I was gone. He wasn't sure why he was talking about that situation to this man, but he felt as if he could confide in him. Harve sat down and put his feet up, his eyes on the other man's face. Where were you? Everyone thought you were dead. My mother offered me a large sum of money to leave for six months and have no contact with Gretchen. She was sure that once I wasn't seeing her every day, my infatuation with her would be over. So I took the money, always knowing I'd come back. Apparently, the note I wrote Gretchen before leaving never made it into her hands. Harf frowned. The women of this town have been very cruel to both of our wives, all under the lead of your mother. Reginald nodded, his eyes full of sadness. I know. I didn't believe it at first, but the proof has been right before my eyes. How do I make it up to my wife that I didn't believe her to begin with? Harf shrugged. Flowers? Jewelry? Lots of begging and pleading. I'll try it all. Chapter 5 After lunch, Gretchen helped with the dishes, while the men went to the sawmill, to discuss Reginald's first day on the job. As soon as the men left, Doris looked at Gretchen. So I need to know how he ended up, not dead, and don't you dare leave out a single detail. Gretchen laughed. She'd been amazed that her friend had been able to wait until the men were gone to ask the question. She explained briefly what she understood of the situation. I think he finally believes me that his mother never gave me the note. Well, that's good. I could have told him that his mother was a snake. Doris shook her head. I guess no man would ever want to believe his own mama was capable of being so vindictive and evil. Vindictive and evil. Those words describe her exactly. She said ugly horrible things to me again yesterday, as soon as he left the house. It's not going to be easy to look at her on holidays. Gretchen couldn't imagine keeping someone's son and grandchild from her, though. Do you have to? Can't you just send Reginald off to deal with the old harridan? Gretchen laughed. I do like the way you think. No, I don't think I can do that. I'm not a bad person you see. I even invited her to come to lunch next week after church, and she flat out refused. Nice. Well, don't worry. You will always have Rika and me. My mother was much kinder once we told her we were married, so maybe I'll have her again as well. Maybe I won't, though. Were you and your mother close before? Doris asked. She'd moved to town long after Reginald had died. We were. She was only ever able to have one child, and we did everything together. I've honestly missed her these past few months, and I understand how ashamed she felt. I just wish she could have gotten past it and been my champion. I wish she could have, too. Doris wiped another dish clean and rinsed it. Is Reginald excited over the baby? Gretchen smiled. I asked him that very question. I don't think he's had enough time to let it sink in yet. It's been more a matter of doing what he knew he needed to do than thinking about the child I carried. He seems happy enough, except when he's talking or thinking about his mother. Are you going to forgive him? Doris asked. How could I not? He's my husband and the father of the child I'm carrying. I'll spend the rest of my life with him, and I will love him every day of my life. I need to get to know him again. He's changed some. He grew a beard, and he seems stronger and more independent now. He was willing to stand up to his father finally and say he wouldn't be a banker. I'm glad he's doing that. The stronger he is, the better husband he'll be to you. Gretchen smiled at that. I think he's going to do just fine. We just need to get past his mother trying to manipulate us. 
I hope you can. She's always trying to turn people's words and make sure she has the support of all the women in town. Not many women would be able to deal with her on a regular basis. Well, I don't have much of a choice. I should have interviewed my future in-laws before agreeing to marry him, shouldn't I? Next time I decide to get pregnant outside of wedlock and be left behind while my fiancé goes off to die, I'll be sure to interview first. That's probably a good idea for next time, Dora said, winking at her. I'm so glad he's back. And I'm even happier you didn't marry Daryl because then where would you be now? And Rika would be pining away with longing for my brother for the rest of her life. How would she be able to teach? Well, it's obvious that I saved the entire town by not marrying your brother. You may thank me later. Gretchen grinned at Doris, happy to have a friend she could be silly with. Don't think I won't. By the time the men came back from the mill, the two women were sitting at the table talking as they worked on mending. Tomorrow, I'm going to bring the blocks I have made for the baby's quilt. I need you, and Rika, to help me quilt it. No problem. I have a quilting frame under my bed. I'll get it out, and we'll have it done in no time. Dora set her mending down and looked at the two men. Are you all finished? Harv nodded. He knows the business. I'll be very happy to have a third person working with me. I think we can get caught up in a week or two, and then we can start on making some surplus. It will be nice to fill an order as soon as it's placed. Just remember I get to take a week off once the baby is born. I didn't get to spend the whole pregnancy with Gretchen, but I'm going to spend the baby's first week with them both. Gretchen exchanged a look with Doris, surprised. I had no idea you wanted to be home for the first week. I had no idea you were pregnant until two days ago. I guess we're even. He held his hand out to her. Let's go home, wife. I have some shirts of my own that need to be mended. Yes, dear. Reginald gave her a pleased look. My wife is already obedient. How long do you think this is going to last? He asked, Harf. Not more than a week, if she keeps spending time with my wife. Harv rested his hand on Doris's shoulder. Doris laughed. You'd get bored if I obeyed everything you said. Then we wouldn't get to have good rousing fights and even better make-up sessions. I'll see you tomorrow. Gretchen called over her shoulder as she and Reginald headed for the door. As they walked, she said, sometimes I forget that they're newlyweds, too. The children throw me off. They really do seem happy together. They're very happy. As they walked toward the little cabin, they passed by a wagon that stopped beside them. His father called down to them. Where are you going? Back home. We just had lunch with the butlers, Reginald replied. He wasn't sure what his father wanted, but he was surprised he was being so easygoing about him not taking the job at the bank. I see. When do you start your job at the mill? Tomorrow morning. Maybe Gretchen can spend the day with your mother then. She has some mending to do, and I've heard Gretchen is very handy with a needle. Reginald looked at Gretchen, praying that she had an excuse ready. I'm sorry, Mr. Linden. I have plans to spend the day with my friend Doris. We're going to finish up the baby's quilt. Maybe another time then. Mr. Linden seemed to study her for a moment. You will let my wife and me see the baby, won't you? I would never keep my baby from his grandparents. You're very important to my husband, so of course you'll be allowed to see the baby. Gretchen knew it was the right answer, despite how Reginald's mother had treated her. Being able to put her words into actions would be harder, but she was determined to do it. She wasn't going to be bitter and mean just because her mother-in-law was. Thank you. With those words, his father drove off. Gretchen looked at Reginald. What was that about? I'm really not sure. Maybe he understands how mother treats people better than I ever did. Maybe. They continued their walk, 
and Gretchen thought about the future in a positive way for the first time since she'd found out she was expecting. I'm so glad you're going to be here to know your child. I don't think you have any idea what it means to me. I think maybe I do. I'm so sorry there were communication issues. She frowned. Was he really dismissing his mother's deliberate manipulation of events as communication issues? I made a book with all of my memories of you for the baby. So he or she would always know where they came from and that they had two loving parents. You did? She nodded. I'll show you when we get home. I put in everything I could remember down to the color shirt you were wearing when we met. I even put in the first flower you ever gave me. Are you still going to show it to the child? Yes, of course. I want them to know how very much their mother loved their father, despite difficult circumstances. He frowned. I thought I'd buy the lumber for the cradle tomorrow and start working on it in the evenings. I'd appreciate that. My mother kept trying to get me to agree to give the baby to a family who had no children, but it was the last piece of you I had. I couldn't begin to agree. I wanted my father to make a cradle, but he refused because the subject made my mother so angry. I hope you and your mother are able to mend your relationship. I think you should go see her one afternoon this week. Gretchen frowned. He was probably right, but she didn't want to risk hearing all of the negative things that could come from her mother's mouth about the subject. I'll think about it. Is she going to be there when the baby is born? I hadn't thought of it. I assumed she would be because I thought I'd deliver in my room at her house, but that's not going to happen now. No, it's not. Ask her to come. I don't mind riding for her after I get the midwife. You don't have a horse, she said, just realizing that fact. How will you ride for anyone? I'll buy a couple of horses and a wagon tomorrow. I'll be just fine. He knew she had no idea how much money his mother had given him to go away, and he didn't want to tell her. The amount had been much more than he could have earned in ten years. Their lives would be a great deal more comfortable than she could possibly imagine. Can we afford that? she asked. He nodded. We can. I'll get it and the lumber tomorrow. Then we'll be able to do our weekly shopping in a wagon and not have to carry things home. That'll be very nice. The store does do deliveries as well, though. I know, but it'll be nice to have transportation. He shrugged. I'm ready to do anything it takes to make you happy, Gretchen. Her first thought was to do that he'd have to cut his mother out of his life, but she knew he couldn't do that. Not without moving far away, and she wanted to be near her family and friends. No, she'd just have to make peace with her mother-in-law, and she didn't know what that would take. When they got home, she put some soup on for their supper and sat down at the table. Bring me the shirt you need mended. She wanted to get to work on it, so she wouldn't feel bad about working on the baby's quilt the next day. For now, he needed to come first. He frowned at her. You don't have to work all the time, you know. I do know that, but I don't like my hands to be idle. When I visit Doris, we're both always working on sewing something, but we can chatter away all day while we sew. It's nice. He went to their small bedroom to get the shirts for her. There are three that need fixing. I guess being a lumberjack was hard on your clothes. Very much so. I can't imagine working in the mill will be any easier on them. He sat down, watching her fingers fly through the fabric. Do you enjoy sewing, or are you just good at it? She smiled. Both. I've often thought about opening up my own dress shop. I think I could make some money doing it, but I won't be able to with the baby. What names have you chosen? She shrugged. I had a couple in mind, but I'm open to anything you want. She was actually a bit embarrassed about the names she wanted to use, now that she knew he was all right. What were the names? She sighed. I was going to name a boy after you. If it's a girl, Regina. He smiled. 
You really did miss me, didn't you? He was inordinately pleased by the name she'd chosen for their child. Her eyes met his. I didn't think I'd be able to go on when I found out I'd lost you. When I realized there was a baby on the way, I knew I couldn't just curl up in a ball and die, so I took care of myself for the baby. I never knew I could feel so much melancholy in my life. He frowned at her. You didn't think of taking your life. She nodded. I did. I thought I'd wade out into the ocean and just let the waves take me away. I didn't do it, but I liked the idea of my body being lost at sea, just as yours was. She'd laid in bed many nights thinking she'd do just that. But then the baby had moved, and she'd known she had to go on for him. I'm so sorry. Please promise me you'll never do that. I won't. I have everything to live for now. She put her hand on her stomach, feeling the baby kick. Do you want to feel your baby move? He nodded, moving around the table beside her. She took his hand and put it on the spot where the baby was moving. Wow. Does that hurt? She shook her head. No, it just feels odd. The first kick helped pull me from the melancholy because it meant the baby was fine and I'd always have a little piece of you in my life. In that moment, Reginald felt a deep anger toward his mother. He wanted to go to her and rage at her for making the woman he loved so terribly sad instead of giving her the note he'd written her. He had no idea how he would be able to forgive her if he'd lost his Gretchen. She went back to her sewing, unaware of the thoughts going through her husband's mind. She was content for the first time in six months, and she was pleased that her circumstances had changed so abruptly. Somehow, she'd never managed to feel ashamed of the baby growing within her. She hoped she never would.